Welcome to another five minute Lightroom tutorial. This time we're talking about probably the most powerful tool when it comes to editing in Lightroom and that's the tone curve. Hey everyone, I'm photographer Tim Northey or TK North. If you're new to this channel, this particular series, I pick a part of Lightroom, spend five minutes trying to give as much information on that part of Lightroom as possible. Now, today we're talking about potentially the most powerful tool when it comes to editing in Lightroom. That of course is the tone curve. Now, if you're anything like me, when you first started out editing, you were probably a bit afraid of the tone curve. It looked complicated, you didn't quite understand it and therefore you didn't use it. This video today is to show you that the tone curve isn't that scary, it's actually pretty easy to understand once you get your head around the basics and it is also a really powerful way to edit your photos. Not only the overall tone of your image but also for colour adjustments. So let's not waste too much time, 5 minutes on the clock as usual, jump straight into Lightroom and let's get started. So before I get into editing this image, let's explain the tone curve a little bit more. So basically this one line on your curve represents your entire image in Lightroom. Down the bottom here, you've got the very darkest parts of the image, you've got your shadows, you've got your mid-tones through the center of the curve, and then you've got your highlights up the top of the curve. So basically the very darkest parts of your image moving up the curve to the very lightest parts of your image. Easy way to remember this is up towards the sun. The sun being the brightest is at the top. So as you go up the curve, it gets brighter. The other thing to remember, any point you drag up is going to make your image lighter. Any point you drag down below that line is going to make it darker. So let's get started making some adjustments on this particular photo. The first thing I like to do with my tone curve I always like to adjust via the points. You can also adjust if you open up here, you've got sliders which you can use to adjust different points on the curve. Notice when that you edit here, it won't actually change the curve when you close that up. So you can go in and make further adjustments using those sliders. I like to use points on the curve though. So the first thing I like to do when editing a photo is add in three points. We're gonna add in one for your shadows, one for your mid-tones and one for the highlights. What I like to do is bring up my mid-tones. I'm gonna drag that point from the middle and pull it up. You can see on this particular image how that's already added a nice bit of contrast to the image just from one adjustment. You can see tone curve off. It already looks a lot nicer. Second thing I usually do is usually darken the shadows by pulling that down a little bit. This particular image, the shadows are already quite dark. So I'm actually gonna lighten those a little bit. And then I'm just gonna bring my mid-tones up a little bit more. And then the third thing I wanna adjust is the highlights. So that's this point right at the top of the curve. If I bring that up a little bit, you can see it will just brighten my highlights a little bit as well. Again, turn the tone curve off. You can see already how much of a difference those three adjustments have made. This is why the tone curve is so powerful and why you should definitely be using it if you're not already. So the other thing I like to do with my images is add in a tiny bit of a fade, which is quite common as well. So if you pull this point up from the bottom, it will make the darkest part of your image a bit lighter and it'll kind of flatten out the darkest part. I like to do this a little bit. You'll probably see on some images, people like to really go heavy on this. For me, I like to go kind of just subtle, add in a little bit of a fade. So I like to do the same thing on the highlights as well in the opposite direction. So drag that point from the top down a little bit. Keep an eye on the top of the image. You can see how that just flattens out and darkens the highlights a tiny bit. So this one, I'm gonna bring that up and just emphasize those mid-tones even more to really bring out the water. And you can see, just from those adjustments, got a really powerful image there already. Now, the next one, let's come across, I'm gonna show you a typical S-curve. So if you've ever bought or used presets in Lightroom, including my own, you probably know or have seen an S-curve. So these S-curves are very common, and they're common because it adds in really nice contrast to the image, and it also works well with most images. So again, we're gonna add in three points to create our S-curve. Again, the first thing we're gonna do is lighten the mid-tones by dragging up. You can see it adds in a little bit of contrast. Darken the shadows just a fraction, and we're going to bring up the highlights a tiny bit, so brighten those highlights. 
So three quick adjustments, you're already starting to get a small S. Again, the next step, you can kind of add in a tiny bit of a fade if you want to, and also crush those highlights a little bit. Obviously, there's thousands of different variations of an S curve. This is typically what it would look like though. So, so far, we've only adjusted the overall RGB curve. You've also got individual color curves for red, green, and blue. This is where you can color correct, add in a bit of color and get creative with the tone curve. So let's start with red. Anything above the curve, you're going to be adding in red and anything below, you're gonna be adding in the opposite color, which is cyan. In the same way for each of your other curves, you've got green above and you've got magenta below. And then for blue, of course, blue above and yellow below. The curve works in exactly the same way. You've still got your shadows, midtones, and highlights but you're adding in color instead of changing the tone. Be very subtle when you're adjusting these color curves. Tiny adjustments will have a big impact on your photos and it is very easy to ruin an image very quickly if you go too heavy. So this image, I've already adjusted the overall tone curve, the RGB curve. You can see if I turn that off, how it's already adjusted that nicely. If I come down to my red, I'm going to add in a little bit of cyan to my midtone. So I'll do that by creating a point in the middle. I'm gonna create three points again, so I'm not adjusting the total image and I'm gonna pull down a little bit in those midtones. You can see how that's created a nice little bit of cyan in my midtones and I'm gonna do the same in the shadows for this one just to give it a little bit of a cooler tone. Now, you can see if I turn that off, it's made it a little bit more blue. The thing I don't like about this image, it's probably a little bit too green for my liking. So I'm gonna come down to the green curve and I'm gonna pull out green from the entire image. Make it a little bit more towards magenta. So you can see there, again, there's a little bit of magenta in those highlights. So let's come up to the highlights and just bring that back a fraction. So if I turn my color and tone curve adjustments off, you can see how that's affected the overall tone of the image, but also the color of the image. Same way you've got your blue curve where you can add in a little bit of blue or add in a bit of yellow. So for this one, I might even just add in a tiny bit of yellow, probably to the midtones there. But I'm just gonna bring that curve back to the middle for the shadows and also maybe just add in that slight bit of blue to the highlights into the water there. So if I turn that off, again, you can see how that's adjusted not only the overall tone of the image, it's also played around a little bit with the color. So as you can see, the tone curve is a super powerful tool, one you should definitely be using if you're editing in Lightroom. The best way to learn is to always to practice, so jump in, play around, start understanding how the different curves work. I hope this video was useful. Remember to give it a good thumbs up and subscribe if you did get a bit of value. Until next time, I'm TK North. Hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Oh,